اللهم صل على فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها بعدد ما أحاط به علمك أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن عداءهم أجمعين رب الشح لصدري ويسر لأمري وحل لغدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم عجل وليك الفرج عليه مسلاة والسلام يا وارث الفدق والبقية المقدس بحق حق فاطمة الزهراء وبحق أحل البيت عليه مسلاة والسلام Respected elders, youngsters, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa rakatuh. We know that the purpose of our creation is to attain spiritual growth and advance towards attaining closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala. And the only path that one can take to reach that pinnacle is sirat al-mustaqim. According to the numerous traditions that we shall see in the later courses of these series, the path of Sirat al-Mustaqeen is none other than the path of the Imam whom we are supposed to and obliged to follow in order to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala. However, one cannot entirely follow the path without having ma'rifah and conviction of the entity and the path that he has chosen to follow. Because without ma'rifah and conviction, one can be easily deviated and also affected by the dunyavi matters such that one can easily lose his power and willpower to follow the path, especially in the last of times, the Akhirul Zaman. Therefore, in this series of the Fatima Inspirational Insights dedicated specifically to say the Fatima to Zahra Salaamu Alayha to the Ahlul Bayt and Yabna Zahra Hujjat ibn al-Hasan alayhi wa salatu wa salam, the Imam of the time, inshallah we should look into a brief exegesis of two short but deep du'as commonly recited which are du'a al-Ma'rifa and du'a al-Ghariq to provide a better understanding of the du'as and attain maximum benefits from them. The aim of this series is to enable us to serve, advocate and defend the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala Mazluma Sayyida Fatima to Zahra salamu alayha better and better till we join the ranks of Yabna Zahra in perfecting this lofty cause inshallah. So without much ado, join us in delving into the authenticity of these two supplications. These two supplications have been reported in the famous and reliable book Al-Kafi, volume 1, page 337 to 341, by the renowned Shia scholar, Sheikh Al-Kulaini, Ridwanullahi alayhi. It is also noted by his esteemed student, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim Numani, rahmatullahi alayhi, in his book Al-Ghayba on page 86. Shaykh Muhammad bin Ali al Hussein, better known as Shaykh al Saduq, whom we all have heard of sometime or the other in our lives, in his book Kalamuddin wa Tamamu Naima, volume 2, page 242, has also narrated it. And the renowned Shaykh Abbas al Qummi, in his famous Mafatih al Jinan, has also recorded these two supplications. Zurairah narrates from Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam from the sixth holy Imam that once while discussing about Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu wasalam, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, there will be an occultation for the Imam al Mahdi before his reappearance. And Imam then gave these two du'as of al Ma'rifah and al Ghariq when he was asked that what can a person do during this time? Sayyid al Tawus rahmatullahi alayhi in his book Jamal al Usbu cites the recommended actions to be performed on Friday. Here, very interestingly, he relates that from the first representative of Imam al-Zaman alayhi salatu wasalam, that if due to a genuine problem one cannot recite the various invocations of Friday, then at least one should not neglect these two du'as, du'a al-Ghayba and du'a al-Gharik, because these du'as are full of greatness and superiority, and they suffice by the grace and the mercy of Allah that he has bestowed upon us such great du'as and they suffice for the rest of the du'as because it is a summation of all the du'as that we recite on Friday. But why is it so important to gain ma'rifah? Because at the end of the day, whenever we are reciting these du'as, what are we reciting them for? To gain ma'rifah, to know and recognize our imam. So why is it important to gain ma'rifah? 
the importance of attaining ma'rifah, especially in the Akhir al-Zaman, when the Imam is not in front of our eyes, we cannot see him to our eyes, is so important, more important than during the times of Rasulullah till 255 A.H., during the time of the 11th Imam Shahada. Why? The reason is because despite the fact that at that time Rasul and the Ahlul Bayt, the successor of Rasul, were in front of the people, the people failed to recognize them. And what happened? The chain of events happened such that there was a lot of plotting and plitting and there was a lot of backstabbing going on. And there were no true believers. There were very few, a handful of true believers. So let us look at the chain of events that has taken place since the time of Rasulullah that till now that made Ghaibah important and that makes Ma'arifah so important for the reappearance of the Imam. So despite Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being in front of them, yet they did not conform to the teachings of Islam. They did not realize, they did not fully accept. And the plotting and the plotting such as Tabuk, such as the Ifq, such as the plots mentioned in Surah Tarheem happened. The calamity of Thursday happened. The assassination of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam happened. The burning of the door happened. Jamal happened. Imam Hassan alayhi salam's body was attacked with arrows. Karbala happened and the arrest, the house arrest, the imprisonment, the debasement, the abasement and the poisoning of all the remaining and rightful Imams happened. All these events which led to the gaib of Imam Al-Hujjah alayhi salam, Allah had to put him in occultation to keep him safe. So when all these atrocities could have happened during the presence of the Imam, have happened in the presence of the Imams, have happened in the presence of Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt, is in the situation where the Imam is not physically present, more dangerous and more precarious. This is one of the reasons why these supplications are so important, because without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta and the Ahlul Bayt, we cannot do anything at all. And this we shall see in our coming sessions as well. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam in sermon 229 recording in Najjul Balagha about Akhir zaman says that at that time to be hit by a sword would be easier than earning one lawful dirham. Earning one lawful penny is going to be so difficult. One halal penny, one tayyib penny, one tayyib earning is going to be so difficult in the Akhir zaman reported in Muntakab al-Asr, page 227, and the face of this difficulty for the believers at the time of the 12th Imam, Imam Sajjad alayhi wa salatu wa salam, Imam Zinul Abidin alayhi salam, says that truly those people who are during the time of occultation of Imam al-Mahdi, these people acknowledge his imamat, they await his reappearance, these people are better than the people of all times. You know why? Because Allah has given them such an understanding that the occultation for them is as good as meeting the imam. At the time of the occultation, these people are like those who did jihad and the command of the Holy Prophet in the sense that they are sincere and they are the true Shias, they invite us to the way of Allah secretly and openly as well. Imam over here is talking about what? He's talking about the Akhir al Zaman, the time when we cannot see the Imam, yet we have the belief in Ghaibah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala in Surah Al Bukhara says, Zalik al Kitabu la Ghaibah fi hudan min mutaqeen, aladina yu uminuna bil. Ghaib. It has also been narrated that to hold on to a burning coal in one's hand could be so easy, but to hold on to Urwatul Wusqa, the rope of Allah and Ahlul Bayt, will be so difficult in the final times, in the Akhirul Zaman. And my dears, this is the Zaman which we are living in. This matter is so serious, so serious that Sudair, one of the companions of the Holy Sixth Imam, narrates that I, with Abu Basir and Aban bin Taghib and Mufadal, entered into the presence of the Holy Sixth Imam, alayhi salatu wa salam, and we saw a strange sight, we saw a strange scene. What did they see? He says that we saw the Imam was seated on the floor with a Khaybari clock over him and he was weeping and weeping as if a mother cries over her dead son and he was saying one sentence. He was saying, Sayyidi Ghaibatuka Nafartul Qadi Badayyakat Alayya Min Hadi My master, referring to the 12th Imam, my master, your occultation has taken away my night's sleep. I'm unable to sleep anymore. Wasat Minni Rahat Fuadi And it's taken away the tranquility from my heart. So there it says we were shocked and asked the Imam, Yabna Rasulullah, 
what has happened? Is everything okay? Has anybody died? Who has died? Imam said, no, I just saw this, the book of Jafar, of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. And in that book, I saw the period of the 12th Imam and his occultation and how confused and bewildered the Mu'mineen will be during that time. And I was crying over that time. And this is how difficult these times will be and this is why it is so important that we should hold on to this rope and how can we hold on it is through these kind of supplications inshallah join us in the next clip whereby we shall explore and to better understand these beautiful du'as to perform better and better in seeking nearness qurba to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta and his proofs but before we end this clip let's keep our hands on our chest and together recite these du'as in seeking the actual success for both worlds Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammadin wa ajjil farajahum wa la'an a'da'ahum ajma'in Allahumma a'rifni nafsak fa'innaka illam tu'arifni nafsak lam a'rif rasulak اللهم عرفني رسولك فإنك إن لم تعرفني رسولك لم أعرف حجتك اللهم عرفني حجتك فإنك إن لم تعرفني حجتك ظللت عن ديني يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Shabbat shalom.